Thank you very much, Keith, and thank you for inviting BioAmber out. So this is our, our first uh, presentation of this kind of a forum, so we're really looking forward to it. Um, a little bit of a history. We're a New York Stock Exchange listed company. We have the commitment to be TSX listed before the end of April. So we uh, hope it will be done in March sometime, but the commitment is by the end of April we will be listed on the TSX. So currently New York Stock Exchange listed, IPO'd roughly four years ago. This is our facility. So we have the world's largest succinic acid plant. This is up and running in Sarnia. The capacity is 30,000 tons a year. So this is not a science experiment. A lot of people have seen these issues in, in the biotechnology world where people come up with a better idea. This is actually up and running at commercial scale. What is biosucinic acid and actually what do we do? So yesterday, all the plastics that you see in the world, every single plastic bottle, everything is produced from the energy, from the oil and gas side of the equation. All of it. Today, the bioamber, you can now produce these from sugar as a source material. So if you look up here, on the right hand side, you see conventional historical way that we created the building blocks for all the chemicals that we used in plastics, polymers, resins, etc. And it's all through the crude oil process, the naphtha chain. And if you look in the middle at the bottom where we've got building block chemicals, you've got the HOOOH. Now we go back to the top left. We use sugar with a proprietary yeast and water in a very simple process like making beer at the breweries. And we produce the exact same molecule. The only way you can tell the difference between this molecule in the middle that's produced from sugar or produced in the naphtha chain is to actually take it and carbon date it. Of course, the naphtha chain will show it's very old, and that from corn will show it's very new. But otherwise, it is a perfect substitute, perfect, um, perfect replacement. It is identical. There is no differentiation between the two. These are the applications. And again, all plastics, resins, polymers, etc. To Keith's part, you look at the bottles here. We can take our succinic acid which is not being used in these bottles today. There is a component in these bottles that is being used that, again, is derived from oil and gas chain called isothalic acid. If we take that isothalic acid out of the bottle and we replace it with succinic acid, the bottle manufacturer will save 30% on that part of the bottle just because of the weight differential. The, propri the properties, the crystallinity, everything is identical. As far as the manufacturing process, it's a drop-in. They don't have to change the process at all. So the overall savings in this bottle by switching from isothalic acid to succinic acid is 1%, ballpark. In the U.S. alone, we consume, well, North America, we consume roughly 50 billion water bottles a year. 1% of that is material. And that doesn't include the Coke and Pepsi or rest of the world. That's just the U.S. This is the type of savings that we provide to the people who manufacture the resins to create the bottles. If you look at what it does for the environment, again, this is our molecule that we create from sugar versus a molecule created through the energy process. If you use the oil and gas process, you end up with seven tons of carbon for every ton of succinic acid you produce. When you use our process, starting with sugar, even if you account for all the fuel used by the farmer in the fields and all the processing fuel, all the energy, and our process, at the end of the day, we have a negative carbon footprint. This is very, very important. Before we get to, to this slide, most people will look at us and say, again, a science experiment, where do you get this from? I'm going to try to explain in layman's terms what we have and where we got it from. We have a yeast, a bug, that has been created by Cargill. Cargill is one of the largest private companies on the planet. They're the largest bioengineering firm on the planet. We have an exclusive, perpetual, global right to this yeast to produce succinic acid. The yeast actually consumes the sugar, and then through the internal process of the yeast that we develop through metabolic pathway, this yeast then spits out succinic acid. But in the process, it actually sequesters carbon from the air. 
This is why we have a negative carbon footprint. This yeast actually takes carbon from the air, bolts it onto the sugar molecule after it's done its internal workings, and spits out succinic acid. What this is, is this is from the Department of Energy. This is their chart from their Bible they published in 2004. BioAmber actually started within the Department of Energy in the late 90s. So this is a 20-year overnight success. In the late 90s, the Department of Energy wanted to use biomass to create building block chemicals. They chose succinic acid right in the middle here because of all of the chemicals you can create, succinic acid has the greatest yield. We can take, or we do take, one pound of sugar and create one pound of succinic acid. If you look at ethanol, it's two pounds of sugar, one pound of ethanol. So again, very, very important. Once you've created succinic acid, you could then use Betty Crocker, stovetop, basic, off-the-shelf, decades-old chemical processes, and you can convert succinic acid into other chemicals. They will also be bio-renewable because, again, it's sugar at the front end into succinic acid, simple process, you now have other chemicals. There's some fancy names up there, but the ones with the blue stars, top right, butadienyl, BDO, and then THF here in the left. BDO is all the plastics under the hood of the car. THF, for most of you, you're going to go home tonight, you're going to do your yoga, you're going to slap on your Lululemon pants, that's THF. Right now, when you put those pants on, they're made from oil. When our second facility is up and running, we're producing THF, it'll be made from sugar. This is not our second facility. I cheated. This is actually a picture of our pilot plant in France that ran for five years. I just blew it up to make it look much bigger than our top right plant that we've got right now running. But just to give you an idea, our second plant is going to be seven times as large as the existing plant at only three times the cost. So right now, we undercut the petrol process. This is the problem we've had historically with all biotechnology. It's great, you can do things, you can turn lead to gold, but at what cost? We do not need subsidies. We undercut the petrol process and we can compete down to $25 a barrel. The BDO market. So again, our first plant just creates succinic acid. Our second plant is going to create succinic acid and BDO and THF. These are massive markets, six, eight billion dollar markets. Again, all the plastics under the hood, all the poly polyester, spandex, etc. This is a technology for our second plant. You see top left, it's our plant that exists right now, but of course it'll be much larger. We'll create 200,000 tons of succinic acid a year. And then we use a second technology, proven. Johnson Matthey, one of the largest bioengineering firms on the planet out of the UK, they have a proprietary technology that they today are responsible for about 25% of the global production of BDO and THF. Our product will be the front end to the facility they build for us, and then we will produce BDO, THF, and succinic acid. So the point I'm making is, there's no risk. The technologies have all been de-risks here. Financing plant number two, it's a half a billion dollars. I'm running out of time. Key point is U.S. Department of Energy has got their hand up. It's publicly press released in September for a $360 million low interest loan guarantee for plant number two. The balance that we'd need to plug, we have partners like Vinmar, who has an offtake agreement of plant number two, Mitsui, who's a 40% owner in plant number one, and a lot of other global chemical giants are coming to the table because we finally succeeded and we've made it work. So we have, we believe, not as much of a challenge as people might think to finance plant number two. There's precedence. Plant number one, we built in Ontario. We chose Ontario because the government came in and they financed basically half of it with low interest loan guarantees. That plant number one cost us 165 million Canadian. They came up with 82 million of that low interest loan guarantees and grants. So there is precedent there. Value proposition, right now our market cap is $120 million. Plant number one, when we're up and running, and we believe our guidance is, will be at capacity in early 2018. So plant number one at full capacity will kick out about 24 million EBITDA. Plant number two, when it's up and running, which is forecast around 2021, will kick out another 145 million EBITDA. So combined, you're at about 170 million EBITDA, and our market cap's 120 right now. 
So there is a value proposition there to be had. We basically are trading right now as if there's nothing else other than plant number one. Last point is we built plant one, we built plant two. We have the Koreans have approached us to retrofit a facility in China at their expense because they recognize our technology. They're going to pay for it, retrofit it, ramp it up. We end up with approximately 40% of the economics, and that could be as soon as Q1 2018. Thank you very much.